areas where the orange is exactly what you want. And other areas where it's like, no. Once it starts shifting towards that blue, that pink is just, ah, that's what I'm talking about. That tone right there. That is my jam. I'm going to throw it in just the underside of this cloud. And, oh, so these clouds over here, I am going to leave a little bit of white space around it. Which I didn't leave all that much white space, but it's okay. I can go back and I can fudge it with a gel pen. That's what I'm talking about. It's like, it's beautiful, you're mesmerized, then it's over. Then it's scary walk down the hill. It's not that scary of a walk down the hill. I have a flashlight. I even have a bunch of headlights too. It's really nice this time of night to go do a night dive. Everybody around here is been doing a lot of night diving and there's been, oh, it's sea turtle um, nesting season too. So there's a bunch of turtles everywhere. But right now it's, uh, there, everyone's been seeing like rays and eels and I've been very impressed. I did a dive recently and I was really, really impressed with the reefs and the size of the fishies. Cause that's one thing from diving, oh, I've been a diver for about 15 years, is that, oh, oh my gosh, I hope I'm not blocking any of this beautiful view. Um, being a diver for the last 15 years is like, you. it's not just that the reefs are like, make you wanna cry, which I'm a big baby, so I have been underwater crying. <laughs> But also, the fishies, the size of the fishies, they just get smaller and smaller every year, and they look scared of everything and everyone, and you're just like, I'm sorry. So, if you are a diver, man, this is a treat around here. And, I mean, I'm glad I mixed this super bright orange. Oh, see how pretty it is? It's just, I love it. I love it. I love it so much. I am going to blend that orange in even more. And then I'm going to take, these are places where the Venetian watercolors are so nice to have because the pigment is just great. And they are crazy pricey, but having them in conjunction gives you everything you need. So I'm gonna throw in some bright, bright down in here. So that way we for real know where our sun's coming from. And then I'm also gonna take this across the water. too bright, but that's okay. Sometimes things feel too bright to me. And then I'm like, oh wait, totally not. I feel like I lost a lot of my pink. layered there. Ah, that's the easiest fix. Then, now it's very muted. Cool. Probably the smartest thing would be for me to have like 
a brush for doing pink and a brush for doing these oranges. Because I love the tips of pink. I mean, that's just beautiful. And I'm going to take them in every so often in some of these spaces, give it some fluffiness. But I want to still, even though I've got, I want to still keep some of these white spaces. Excuse me. The change, it changes so quickly. I mean, I might have to end this soon because we might be coming up onto, oh, there's like the cutest little lizard. And he 100% looks like he's just chilling watching the sunset. Nothing prettier than a relaxing sunset. Oh, so pretty. And I'm going to go in just a, a few more of these little clouds that are back lines. I'm just going to put a little pink in there. And everywhere behind some of these faces, especially towards the horizon, I want that to be. Pink and this pretty, pretty, pretty orange. Which again, I might go back and ump it up a little more with some lemon yellow. So, I still, I mean, I know this is a lot of white space there, but I just really like that shape. don't really want to mess it up too much because it's grooving in my opinion. And I know at this point we've really lost a lot of our white space, but it was there earlier and I remember, I remember it being there and I want to keep some of it. And I like this shape. This time of the day, it's so pretty. So the ocean now at this point has a lot of pink going across it. I'm just doing some little strokes, trying to bring some harmony. When I do ocean strokes, I just try to do really light strokes in the direction of the waves that are kind of crisscrossing. So, and I get, pretty far back on my brush as well. So that way I can have as much stroke as possible. And just little crisscrosses. I want it to be brightest near where that sunburst is coming through and then getting lighter. Funny how I was like, oh, this water's gonna be pretty boring. Now it's like, um, excuse me, who did you call Bori? And, geez, that's so crazy and beautiful. <laughs> the other day I painted a rainbow. There's like crazy lots of rainbows out here. And it was so pretty, and it was so fun. I love rainbows. It was just a beautiful place. So, got something bright. 
I'll put right under these cows. It really said, hey, God is right here and it's seriously showing it out. And again, whenever anything feels boring, usually you just don't have enough contrast. Or you have like shapes that are too similar. That's one thing I strive to teach is how not to make boring paintings. <laughs> And again, this is the nicer, really full Venetians, which are giving that just super bright hue. I'm going to take some of this down here. Got kind of bouncy on me. So I'm already like super digging this, y'all. This little cloud, I'm going to go ahead and do some quick highlights under. So Oh, man, y'all, it's like once it turns all pink like this, I'm just, and then I'm always like, I should have waited. I should have waited just a little bit longer before I started painting. Every time I think that. So I am going to fill in a bit of this white space, not all of it. But at the same time, I don't want to have big chunks of boring thing. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Uh, I mean, seriously, seriously. And now my, my brush is like, ooh, let's grab that beautiful hue. So I'm going to take my brush and angle it this way so I can kind of get under and try to pull out those beautiful fuchsia hues, which I already had like a really nice little lavender color going on here. So it's not so difficult. And as you see, because I'm doing this angled brush, I'm still maintaining these lovely shapes. And I'm gonna angle it again this way. And, I mean, I'm so into that. Ooh, a boat, a boat's coming by. I bet they were out at the wrecks. Beautiful day to be diving. And I'm going to let this show through. So that way it's like, oh, hey, that's what that tone is. Man, that's a pretty tone. Oof, y'all. Oh. I mean, that's all I got. That's all I can say about it. It's just spectacular. So pretty. So let's do a little bit more adding these pinks in. Not really. I think I'm going to get all up in this business. We have such interesting cow shapes going on. And add a little bit more tone. Which again, this goes back to the, I could be doing this for hours. A little bit of tone here, a little bit of tone here. Wow, man.
just beautiful. Oh, so electric. So beautiful. And, and yeah, it goes back to the whole, as it changes, I just want to keep changing my painting. Which I am going to add a bit more ink in here. And again, now is a time where, as you can see, the water has gotten really, I mean, uh, not the water, our front bushes have gotten really dark. I'm going to go in and make it really dark and just really, you know, knock them out a bit, you know? We'll have a little bit of green left, but a lot of dark. So I can allow the ocean and that beautiful sky to be my main base. And I don't want to just go over them with something dark because I want there to still be hints of this is green. If there's not, then it's okay. But if there is, I think it makes it a bit more interesting. Okay, so I'm probably going to call this Danzo because if I keep messing with it, I will screw it up. But I will go back and work on it some more because I would like to kind of punch up some of these cloud colors. The easiest way to punch them up is to let everything dry really good and then go back into it. go back into it with some wash. One thing I really like about sunsets is that it feels counterintuitive if you try to think of like the rules of lights and darks. Because you usually think of like your lights are going to be from a source above. But with a sunset, your light is below. So it changes how your shapes are going to be highlighted. And I just can't help it. I love that. These clouds that we're all bubbly, I have to figure out what the real term for those are because man do I love them. They look like, like popcorn in the sky. Ooh, I heard something else up over there. Not really anything scary in the rainforest. Except my imagination. And yeah. I think that will be it for right now. It looks kind of crazy. As you can see, Oof. also I shouldn't, I mean, I'm going to stay out till the sun goes down because it's too pretty not to. Oh, 
I'm so bad. I, di I directly said I was going to stop. Because all I'm doing is making it darker. Because it's slowly getting darker and darker. Ah, I do really love that shape. Well, we've lost most of what we had going on. The, all of the big, big beautifulness is gone. So, and my, I don't think I have a camera. I mean, a light on there, so y'all aren't going to be able to be able to see me for much longer. So I might as well call it a day, right? Okie dokie, guys. Um, this is the little bit that I got done so far. I mean, it's not a little bit. It's a pretty good bit. I'm going to go back and I'll make that a little darker. Clean up these shapes a little bit more. Definitely going to add some more contrast with gouache. Thank you so much for joining me for this watercolor painting session and this beautiful sunset in Fredericksted. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. And I hope you'll join me for more uh, digital workshops. And maybe you'll even be inspired to come and join me on one of my real international workshops. Thank you so much. Mwah, mwah, mwah.